Henri Rousseau was born in May 1844 in Laval, France. His father was a tinplate maker. But the business was not going well and the family lived in extreme poverty. Rousseau also helped his father from an early age. In other words, Rousseau started making things at an early age. The Rousseau family was unable to repay their debts. And was foreclosed on several times, moving each time. Rousseau lived in such poverty until high school. He had mediocre grades in high school. But he was talented enough to win small prizes in art and music. After graduation, at the age of 19, Rousseau found a job at a lawyer's office. However, a bad friend of his suggested that he steal some of the firm's money. And he ended up stealing 15 francs. He was imprisoned for a month on the charge of theft. After that, he was so disgusted with going to a reformatory that he enlisted in the army until things cooled down. However, five years later, at the age of 24, his father passed away, so he discharged himself from the army to take care of his mother and began living in Paris. The following year, he married Clemence, the daughter of a landowner, who was 15 years old and 10 years younger than him at the time. The following year, their first son was born, but he died after only one year. Clements gave birth seven times. Six of those children, however, died before the age of 20. She herself also passed away at the age of 35. Later, at the age of 55, Rousseau remarried to an older woman named Josephine, who also passed away four years later. Rousseau was predeceased by his spouse and children eight times in his lifetime. This experience of loss is important to Rousseau. It undoubtedly influenced his desire to express himself. Rousseau began working at the customs office in Paris at the age of 27. His job was to collect taxes when merchants entered the city of Paris. And it was a very comfortable working environment. He had been painting by the time he was in his thirties. And his boss offered him this job with the intention of giving him an easy job. So that he could devote himself to painting. Incidentally, as a member of society, Rousseau did not excel at all. He did not rise in the ranks and remained an ordinary employee until he retired at the age of 49. Incidentally, he remained a lowly private for five years in the army. He may have been unmotivated about working life. Rousseau first exhibited his work at the Salon de Paris in 1885. When he was 41 years old, However, Rousseau's work was not selected and was never seen by the public. However, at the suggestion of Paul Signac, a neo-impressionist painter, Rousseau exhibited a carnival evening at the Salon des Independents. This was the first time Rousseau's work was seen by the public. However, this work was not appreciated at all. First of all, as is common with all Rousseau's works, there is no sense of perspective or three-dimensionality. Also, the theme of two people in fancy carnival costumes in the forest was not meaningful. If you look closely, you can see a man's face in the small window of the hut behind. It is a little too surreal and interesting. Now, let me introduce the exhibition. Circumstances surrounding the paintings of the time. The Salon de Paris, where Rousseau first attempted to exhibit his works, was a government-sponsored exhibition, which started in 1737, during the reign of Louis XIV. And the judging system was added in 1798. The purpose of this program is to strengthen French cultural power and appeal to other countries. Therefore, proper drawing tended to be appreciated. In other words, there were unspoken rules such as drawings should be neatly drawn and motifs should be historical paintings or portraits. 
In other words, there were unspoken rules at the Salon de Paris. And only works that followed these rules could be exhibited. And since the Salon de Paris was government led, it had a great deal of influence. The level of influence was so great that it was almost to the point of saying, Artists who fail the Salon cannot make a living from painting. Therefore, it was necessary for painters to create orderly paintings that would be popular at the Salon. The impressionist painters objected to such a Salon de Paris. They held their own impressionist exhibition from 1874 to 1886. These private sector led reforms did increase the tendency to say, Isn't the Salon de Paris getting old? The Salon de Paris was privatized in 1880. It was against this backdrop that two neo impressionist painters, Paul Signac and Georges Seurat, launched the, the Salon des Independents. The principle of the exhibition was no judging, no prizes, and free entry. So, if you apply and say, I'll exhibit, and pay the exhibition fee, anyone could exhibit their work. This was a very important exhibition in the history of art. First of all, it completely changed the commercial distribution of art. In the days of the Salon de Paris, the painter who was recognized by the Salon was offered a job. But after the Salon des Independents, the art dealer who came to the Salon des Independents found his favorite painter and offered him a job. The Salon des Independents was the place to go to for a job. In a sense, this is similar to the change from being published in advertising media to anyone can send out information via social networking services. The Salon des Independents have allowed the discovery of talent that had been buried under the radar. The Salon des Independents was a perfect match for Rousseau, who had not received any praise from the public and whose drawing skills were not very high. Rousseau thus continued to exhibit his own works at the Salon des Independents until the end of his life. Rousseau, who exhibited his first work at the age of 42, continued to exhibit his work at the Salon des Independents, undeterred by public outcry. Rousseau until he left his job at the age of 49. He worked as a customs official during the week and painted on Sundays. This picture was also drawn at this time. Rousseau's painting style is very unique. He painted backgrounds and motifs such as people and animals in two parts. He painted his favorite landscape first on the entire surface and then painted the people and animals. Since he did not follow the overall balance, there is almost no sense of perspective at first. In addition, he has a habit of making the figures huge in comparison to the background. This painting is a perfect example. In this painting, too, the figures appear to be giants. But Rousseau, of course, did not want to paint giants. These paintings were criticized by critics. Newspaper articles once wrote, they look like they were drawn by a child. And, he would be better off planting cabbages in the countryside. Than living in Paris. However, there were also praises from avant-garde artists. Tiger in a Tropical Storm Surprised was exhibited in 1891, and Rousseau received his first serious review. When the young artist Félix Vallatoun wrote, His tiger surprising its prey ought not to be missed it's the alpha and omega of painting. Yet it was more than a decade before. Rousseau returned to depicting his vision of jungles. The era in which Rousseau lived was the era of the government-led Salon de Paris. And with the advent of the Salon des Independents, paintings were required to be innovative in a way never seen before. In other words, the value of painters with innovative painting styles became more valuable than painters with high technical skills who studied at the academy.
It was as if being technically good was no longer enough. Under such circumstances, painters who tackled new expressions, such as Felix Edouard Vallatoun and Paul Gauguin, were attracted to Rousseau's simplicity. In 1893, at the age of 49, Rousseau decided to apply for retirement and devote himself to painting while receiving a pension. From that time on, Rousseau moved his base to Montparnasse, the sacred city of French painters. His pension was very small, and he opened a drawing class and began to create works of art. While receiving fees for the class, his third daughter, who was living with him at the time, got tired of living in poverty and moved to her uncle's house. Rousseau must have been prepared to give up his stable life to paint. In the midst of such a life, he painted this masterpiece at the age of 53. This painting is one of Rousseau's masterpieces. A lion walks up to an exhausted mandolin playing woman who is sleeping but it never seems to bite her. The situation of a lion in the desert is fantastic and interesting. At first glance, the composition seems a bit tense, but the lion's expression and the composition of the flat surface are humorous and even reassuring. Rousseau wanted to sell this work, but it did not sell because it did not have a high market. Reputation at the time and the work itself was not understood. However, it is now so highly regarded that it is housed in the Museum of Modern Art in New York. When Rousseau was 58 years old, he had so little money that he borrowed money from an art supply store and paid him back with his own work. However, the art supply store did not understand the value of Rousseau's work. Therefore, the art supply store bleached his works and soaked them in cleaning solution with the intention of selling them as mere canvases. Because of this background, there are only a few Rousseau paintings in existence. This painting was painted the year after Rousseau quit his job. It is said that he retired in order to devote himself to the creation of this painting. This painting, which is pointed out to have inspired Picasso's Guernica, makes as strong an impression as Guernica. In the center of the painting is a woman, apparently a goddess of war, holding a torch in her left hand and wielding a sword with her right. But she appears to be running parallel to a horse rather than riding it. The horse, too, has an unusually long face for a horse and its mouth is reminiscent of a wild boar. Many people lie dead at the horse's feet. It is well known that Rousseau was a pacifist, that he never once went into battle during his six years in the army. Probably because he was an incompetent soldier was fortunate for him. His sensitive mind would not have been able to bear the killing. Rousseau painted this painting in 1905. This painting was based on the jungle motif synonymous with Rousseau. Rousseau had avoided jungle themes since Tiger in a Tropical Storm in 1891. But he painted it again at this time. Some say that Rousseau's frequent jungle paintings are inspired by the Mexican landscapes he visited during his military service. And this has long been believed to be true. However, it is now commonly believed that Rousseau did not actually go to Mexico, but rather made observations at the Paris Botanical Gardens and the Paris Museum of Natural History. When Rousseau reached his 60th birthday, he was still criticized by critics but loved by his fellow painters. Rousseau's naive art was a movement that prevailed during the intervening period. Among the painters who admired Rousseau, Picasso was particularly in love with Rousseau's talent. Picasso, 34 years younger than Rousseau, found Rousseau's portrait of a woman in a junk store. 
and was so impressed that he bought it for five francs. In 1908, Picasso held a half-serious, half-burlesque banquet in his studio at Le Bateau Lavoir in Rousseau's honor. Le Banquet Rousseau, one of the most notable social events of the 20th century. Wrote American poet and literary critic John Malcolm Brennan. Was neither an orgiastic occasion nor even an opulent one. Its subsequent fame grew from the fact that it was a colorful happening within a revolutionary art movement. At a point of that movement's earliest success. And from the fact that it was attended by individuals. Whose separate influences radiated like spokes of creative light across the art world for generations. Incidentally, when Rousseau participated in this banquet, he was on parole after serving time for fraud. He was tricked by an acquaintance into becoming an accomplice in this fraud. Rousseau was good-natured and gullible. This painting was inspired by the scene during his imprisonment. Since the people in the painting are wearing prison uniforms, it is expected that the painting depicts a scene from a prison sentence. However, there are many mysteries in this painting. The title of the painting is The Football Players. But the people in the painting do not look like they are playing football. The pose of the man on the far right is also too mysterious. However, they all look like they are having fun. It is hard to believe that they are prisoners. Rousseau lived a tumultuous life, serving time in prison even after his 60th birthday. This painting is the work he painted in his last year of life at the age of 66. It is the most well-known of Rousseau's works. Like Rousseau's other paintings, this one lacks perspective and a sense of three-dimensionality. However, the plants and animals are precisely arranged in the painting creating a fantastic atmosphere. It is truly a dreamlike scene. Guillaume Apollinaire, a poet known as the godfather of Cubism and Surrealism, looked at this painting and said, Look at this beauty. No one can laugh at Rousseau's painting anymore this year, he praised. However, Rousseau died at the age of 66 about six months after exhibiting this painting. I feel the splendor of, self-taught, from Rousseau's paintings. And it makes me think again, what is the value of art? When you learn from someone, you become good at it. But the originality fades away. Rousseau was a painter who did not learn from anyone, but simply followed his own desire for expression and painted according to his own rules until the end. His career is quite unique in the long history of Western art. Some people may say that, the basics must be respected. But what are the, fundamentals of art, in the first place? What are the, basics of expression? The, basics, are actually an assortment of other people's common sense. In this sense, learning can be described as being cursed by someone. If we dare to write it in a mean way. With the internet so advanced, it is the fate of artists to seek originality. After being influenced by someone else. It is also true that because anyone can publish their works. They tend to aim to be popular with the masses before they know it. However, whenever I see Rousseau's works. I learn the importance of a more primitive desire to draw Rousseau's naivete as a primal question, who am I? Thank you for watching the video till the end. Please subscribe and hit the like button.